Welcome to the Crunch Time YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a film review on Baker Mayfield's first game without Odell Beckham on the Cleveland Browns since they traded for him. And this is a small sample size as it is only one game that they played against Cincinnati last weekend. But this is telling as it shows a lot of how Cleveland played without Beckham. And it really showcases the depth of this team and the different weapons that they have without Beckham. And in general, the Browns didn't struggle that much against Cincinnati. They really just destroyed them last Sunday. But overall, the team is looking very well. And they could be making a Super Bowl run. So let's get into the video and specifically look at what Baker Mayfield is doing for Cleveland. On this first clip, we will be looking at Baker's ability to stay poised in the pocket and overall how he has developed from his rookie and sophomore year where he was a little more erratic in the pocket, wasn't as comfortable with what he was seeing and it often bail out if his first or even second read didn't pay off. So we're going to see he stands strong in the pocket and he ends up delivering a great throw to the running back and let's look at the play. So Baker takes the snap and he stays pretty strong in the pocket, sets his feet planted the whole play and he's able to deliver a great throw to Nick Chubb. One thing to look at is how much time he had to make this throw and we'll look right here. He gets the ball at 3.05. And by the time he ends up making this throw, it is 3.02, almost uh, 3.01, and that's about three and a half seconds to make that throw. So great on his offensive line to give him the protection he needs, and also great on Nick Chubb to make that catch. A lot of running backs will not even be in that position as they will just drop screen passes. But the focus here is Baker Mayfield staying strong in the pocket, not running around, giving up after just a couple seconds and this is something that the Browns are going to have to take into consideration when they potentially give him this new contract after this season is how far he's come as a rookie and how much of a leader he is to this. Season. This next play we'll be looking at is a staple of the Kevin Stefanski offense as it's a play action pass and we'll see there's really only two main targets for Baker to throw to. One player, Donovan Peoples-Jones, is going on a deep post, and the other wide receiver is going on a crosser. So let's look at the play. It's a play action pass, as we can see, Chubb and another tight end stay to block. There is a dump off at the bottom of the screen, but that is not necessary, as Baker delivered a dime to Donovan Peoples-Jones for a 60-yard touchdown. And pressure was coming in a little bit at the end of this play, and we see right here, there was a little bit of pressure that Baker had to deal with, but he was still able to deliver a great throw to Peoples Jones. This play takes place on the Browns' first drive in the second half, and it's a third and five, third and medium. They just need to get five yards. And looking at the play design, there's a lot of short routes. Baker to just find anyone who can get open quickly, and we see. Demetriac Felton, a running back, get open relatively quickly on a zig route, and Baker is able to deliver it right on target. See right there? And he ends up getting like 30 yards or so on the yard after catch, which was pretty big as that brought the Browns to midfield. Just looking at it right here, Mayfield found him, and he delivered it right between the two defenders with a diving Logan Wilson, who's had a pretty good season this year. Just wasn't able to close in time. And the Browns got a pretty big play on that Baker Mayfield throw. This play is also a play action, and the Browns are going to try to work the right side of the field here. Andy Janovich is going to be more of a chip blocker, trying to just prevent some of the Bengals' pass rush from getting through. The Browns have a very good offensive line, so Baker does end up getting enough time. But the Browns don't really run too much of a complicated play here. The, the Bengals were just not ready. It honestly looked like the defensive backs were expecting a run here. If we look at it here, it looked like 24 was just trying to block the tight end. And he ended up getting burnt. And the Browns got around like a 20 to 30 yard pass. So look at it here again. Only really one option as 
he was the only one who was open at the time. I think the wide receiver eventually worked himself open. But just 88 was a relatively easy completion for Baker. Added some touch to it and just got it right over him for the big game. On this play, it's a third and long, and the Browns are up by 18 points. The game is practically over, with only six and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. But the Browns are still trying to get first downs and points. And we see there's not too many routes. There's only one route that could get the first down without the running back or wide receiver having to get a lot of yards after catch. But Donovan Peoples-Jones, who is running the streak, does end up getting targeted. And Baker delivers another great throw to him. And he's thrown a lot of dimes to him. We see here, and fits it in perfectly. Jones does take the pretty big hit from Jesse Bates, but he is able to hold on for the 20-yard catch. We see here again, Baker adds just enough touch to it, and it fits it in for another big play. And the Browns are already up by almost 20 points. This is the final play that I will be showing you guys. And the Browns found a way to lose almost 15 yards from the People's Jones catch. It's third and goal. We'll see Baker deliver a dime to David and Joku. Just fit it in perfectly. And he throws a strike. Yep, yeah, this only where Joku could get it. And Joku is a tight end, so he did have a lot more strength than the defensive back but still with 94 getting there I believe that's Sam Hubbard just fit it in and this wraps up the film portion of this Baker Mayfield video and we'll get to the end where we just talk a little bit more about what the Browns should do with his contract situation. Now to wrap up this video I will just give my last thoughts on Baker Mayfield and what Cleveland should do with him. I think that they should re-sign him between the 30 to $35 million range. I don't see any team paying him over that, just wouldn't make sense for any other team in the league. But I do think Baker has potential to be a top 10 quarterback. Depending on what your thoughts are on him right now, it's probably in the 15-ish range, like 12 to 17 is my guess for most people. Doesn't really go any higher or lower than that. But I do think that his leadership on this team is a very underrated quality. And that's something you really just can't measure by stats. And what Baker Mayfield has done for Cleveland that no other quarterback has done in this last in this century is he's given them a winning culture. Like with him here, they've had winning seasons. Like not too many, but he's not been here too long, relatively speaking. And that is what Cleveland needs. They need a leader like him. That's why they picked him number one over prospects like, say, Sam Darnold, who were considered significantly better than him. But Baker has that leader mentality that the Browns needed and that he is giving them. So I think that Baker Mayfield is overall a good quarterback. He's never going to be a superstar, which is exactly what a team like Cleveland, who has so much depth on offense and defense, needs. So these are my thoughts on Baker Mayfield. Let me know what you think of him. Comment below and have a great day.